Hello and welcome back to another video. This is going to be episode 9 of Building Theed. In this week I continued working on the building from last week and I built a window and a door and just made a lot of really technical progress so it might not seem like a lot from the outset but I promise you there were a lot of hours that went into this. So without further delay let's get right into it. So I spent the first few days this week working on kind of what you saw in the preview of last week's video and the thumbnail, which would be the vines and something else, which is over here. As you can probably tell, it is a window and I have the screen kind of blurred out so I can go ahead and focus it and get you guys a look at what I've been up to. So the first thing I want to focus on is the vines. I went ahead and added in some pink and red flowers to break up just the green and bring in some more of that life and vibrance to the mock and I really like the way it looks. And another thing is the way I had it done was I had the smaller leaf pieces and then I kind of stacked them on top of each other and what I did was I went through and added in some snot bricks and then just attached each of them individually so now they're all flat and hugging the building which I think looks a lot nicer and then I added in some more variety with the bright green pieces just making it look a little bit more natural so I'm really happy with that and then the bigger thing this took me a few days but I finally came up with a design that I'm happy with so I'm going to bring over the camera and kind of give you guys a better look at the window so this is the front view of the window and I'm super proud of it there's a lot of weird angles and offsets going into this but the first thing that I want to highlight is the flower box at the bottom. This was actually a idea that was given to me by my friend Jack or Hydrave. He told me that I should add in a flower box so that the window doesn't just look you know out of place or flat on the wall which I totally agree with and I think it looks really really nice. Coming up with a design that I liked was a little bit more challenging though and I originally had built it with Travis bricks, but then there were weird gaps and offsets that didn't line up and I couldn't figure out a way to make it look right. So what I ended up doing was using the little snot brick with the adjacent studs. So then it just some plates on the side with a tile and then on the front is a one by four tile. And then obviously you just stick some plants on the top and it covers up the blue. You couldn't even see it. So that is just attached into the wall with some headlight bricks. And it's a super simple, but really nice design. And getting into the window, we have a bunch of stuff going on. So the first thing is it is all on jumper plates. I can remove the flower box. This is a jumper plate right here. So this frame is half a plate inset into the wall for the windowsill. And another thing is all of the window panes are half a plate inset from the actual frame of the window, which also looks really nice. It doesn't really come up as well on camera, at least not from this angle, but in person, it definitely works really nicely. So basically what we got going on is there are some snot bricks on the inside of this. These outside bricks are all regular tan bricks, but the inside, there's a bunch of snot bricks and then there are jumper plates attaching to the middle of those, which lets me attach all of the clear plates. And I'm using plates instead of bricks because I want to kind of hide what's on the inside because there's not going to be interiors. It's just going to be filler. So that's the reason why I'm using plates for the windows. And then you have three plates and then you have some more jumper plates here and then three plates and then tiles on the end. And in the middle here, these aren't actually connected to anything. These are just sitting in there in tension. And I have some mixel joints, which I can show you in a second, so that when you put it in here, you can push and it doesn't go too far in. You don't just lose it. So that is really nice, but I can go ahead and pull this off like that. So you can kind of see the mixel joint right here. And then I'll take this into a section and attach that so you can kind of see how this is going here you have the snot brick this lime green right here attaching to all of the jumper plates regular plates and then at the end is one by two tiles because they let you slide it into the middle and the top section was a kind of another challenge that I had to figure out this 
is a bunch of tiles, but because of the way that I built this, there would actually be a half plate gap on the top here, and I didn't want that, obviously. So what I did was I started using some snot, which you can kind of see the outlines of the bricks and this here tile that you can see there. So that fills in this gap, but on the back, this is actually attached with a headlight brick to get the offset that you need to attach these tiles. So the front here is a regular snot brick with regular bricks. And then on the back here, you have a, another half plate offset with that headlight brick, but it all works out beautifully to come together and make this window. And then this isn't connected right now. I still have to go back and figure out a way to connect this, but this is just sitting in there for now. And that is what we've got going on the building so far. And I'll have the square part come up to about here and the top of it, the roof will be like a patio area with some chairs and tables. So just a quick little update on the window. Daniel actually asked if we could switch it to dark gray instead of the dark tan, which I'm fine with because the dark tan I just happen to have lying around, which is why I made it out of that color. But dark gray is actually going to tie in better to the rest of the buildings because I wanna have the doors be gray and dark gray and then some of them will be different colors, but I think that will tie it in better. So I went ahead and started making the curve continue around the wall. And what you can see here is I just mirrored it because I figured it would look better having it be the same rather than be a different angle. So it's the exact same thing. And I went ahead and put in some of the big curb slopes just to hold down those hinges. And you can kind of get more of a completed view of the curve of the building. So I went ahead and disconnected the wires from this base plate here and this base plate here because I want to pull this out and flip it around so I can start working on the other side of the house. So this is actually a good place to test how well this is going to transport modularly. So we can go ahead and just slide it out like this and turn it. Slide it back in. And there we go. It is completely switched around and my disconnecting of wires actually worked really well. So that is a positive sign for the transportation of this mock. Okay, so if you guys have been watching my building series for a while, you will probably know that I love to make things the most complicated and convoluted way possible, which I did not disappoint with this door design. I had an idea that I wanted to try, which is number one, to use this arch piece. And if you guys didn't know, you can actually take tiles and slide it into this groove here. So I'll give you an example. If we take this tile, it slides right in like that. And there's a little bit of spacing that you can fit a bracket. So that I wanted to try. And the other thing I wanted to try was to have these spring-loaded shooter bricks because I like the texture that they give and it's pretty accurate to some of the doors that we see on Theed. So those two things on their own are very easy to incorporate, but when you try to mix it together, the lengths that I had to go to to get everything to line up and stay together and be connected. It took me like two hours to build this door, which is basically what I'm trying to say. So now that you guys have seen it and appreciated it, let's take a look at exactly how it's built. Uh, yeah, not, not what you expected. So basically we have brackets here at the bottom and at the top. And the way that I connected the tile sections to the snot sections is pretty simple. You just have brackets attached to the snot right here, that little gray section, and then you have plates attached to that, headlight brick, and a stud to bring it up to be the same height as the brackets going straight up. And then you just put on some clips, put a bar, and then on the actual bracket section, you just stick a jumper plate and a clip, and that all works out perfectly fine. And that was fine. I was completely happy with that. It was simple, it was nice, it was easy. But then trying to figure out the top, how to get it to connect, that is where the nightmare began. 
basically because we're using the tile and bracket technique going into the arch, there is a quarter of a plate offset. Half plates are one thing, quarter of a plate is another thing entirely. So basically, I ended up using headlight bricks and then the new bar connector kind of piece. It's kind of like a hose barb in Lego. And then on that, we have some one by one clips with the stud with the hole in the center. And then connecting those together is a 4L bar. And then connected to that is the same kind of thing that we have with the jumper and the clip. So that's fine. And then we have these bar clips going down into some plates attached to more brackets on the snot section with headlight brick attaching to a headlight brick and then attaching to the bar clip. And that is how you build a door apparently. So the finished product is really, really nice. I'm super happy with it. It has a very nice aesthetic and it's not really something that you can get by using just regular plates because going from a two by two tile into these snot sections, this is a half a plate. And then in the actual brick, there's like a slope section, which is why I wanted to use it in the first place. So there's a lot of stuff that goes into this, but eventually it turns out with a really cool looking door. That is going to wrap up episode nine of Building Feed. This week, I know it probably didn't look like I got that much progress done, but in reality, the amount of time and effort that I put into this was about the same as the other weeks. It just was focused in on two very technical aspects of the mock rather than being kind of spread out over the entire thing. And some of you might think that I'm focusing too much on kind of simple and useless parts of the mock, like a window and a door, who really cares? That is what makes this mock different from the rest of the feed mocks and sets it apart from the rest of the mocks in general. I like to focus on each individual part of the mock instead of kind of taking shortcuts and just using the existing parts and pieces and you know that kind of stuff. So I like to focus on detail and making everything look as good as possible. If you guys are interested in the lights that I'm using in this mock, they're Light My Bricks, and you can get $10 off your first purchase if you click the link at the top right corner of the screen. But that is all of that I have for you guys this week, so thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.